A very good evening to you. Thanks for joining us uh, on the Friday edition of the show. It's the last one for the week and I promise to be exciting as always. I'm Yemi Adebayo. Let me give you a quick rundown of what to expect on the show tonight. Uh, as usual, a countdown to uh, the 2020 Olympics continues. We'll tell you what's going on in Tokyo. Of course, today, a petition was signed that gathered 350,000 signatures calling for the cancellation of the Olympics. We'll talk about that in detail as we go on on the show. We'll see if we can uh, put Team Nigeria in perspective and look at what Team Nigeria is doing. We talked about it a little yesterday. We'll continue with that uh, today. Uh, if uh, uh, one of our guests will be able to join us so that we can uh, continue with um, all of that. And um, so many things uh, to, to talk about on uh, the show tonight. Thanks for joining us once again. I'm Yemi Adebaya. All right, so uh, let's bring you into all that we're doing on the show tonight. Uh, it's important to us to know uh, what you feel about all the things we're talking about. We, we, we love to have your feedback on the show. So this is how you can be a part of it tonight. Uh, sports tonight at channelstv.com. Send us a mail. Facebook, uh, you can drop your comments uh, at channels underscore sports. Channels iPhone sports. That's where you can drop your comments. Then on Twitter, our channels underscore sports. You can let us know how you feel about all of the things happening in your amazing world of sports. Uh, at some point, I will introduce my uh, guests. Uh, none of them will be in the studio. They're in different parts of the world. And that's going to make the uh, conversation very interesting tonight. But uh, let's start. Let's start you off with the Olympics. Let's just tell you that officially it's 70 days to uh, the Olympics. Let's just bring that to you as confirmation from where we stand. In spite of all of the things happening around 70 days to the biggest sporting event on the planet, the multi-sport event, which is the Olympics. Nigeria will be part of it, of course, with uh, 80 athletes in uh, 10 sporting uh, events. So there you have it, 70 days to go. We will see uh, what we will see a lot of things happening uh, with regards to the Olympics, and we'll do our best to unpack all of those things all for you. There's a lot going on right now in Tokyo. So, as I said, 70 days to go. All right, let's move on on the show as we uh, talk about, I mean, our regular starter. That's the way we start the show. Talking about the torch relay going around. Of course, it continued uh, its journey today through uh, Yamaguchi Prefecture. Uh, of course, even as COVID-19 cases uh, seem to uh, be increasing, uh, Japan declared a state of emergency in three more prefectures hit hard by COVID-19 pandemic. But of course, in spite of all of that, uh, the torch uh, relay still going on. Uh, the Prime Minister announced today, uh, was, his announcement today was a surprise, as many people uh, didn't expect uh, some of the uh, tougher um, stance to uh, the Olympics. So we'll talk about all of that, uh, the things Japan is doing to ensure that uh, COVID-19 does not grab the headlines. We'll do that uh, as we move on. But today, you can see the petition we're talking about. That's what happened today. Uh, 350 signatures gathered for the petition, and they're saying, look, cancel Tokyo Olympics. Cancel Tokyo Olympics. That uh, petition, um, you know, the, there's a lawyer and a campaigner leading that. His name is uh, Kenji Utso, Utsonomiya. Uh, that's the guy leading it. You can see him right there in your picture talking about uh, people should prioritize life over the Olympics. That's his message. And as, as, as we're talking about it, it crossed over the 350,000. Uh, you had uh, 1,000 and more other signatures added. Of course, the news hit when they said they had over 350,000 signatures. Uh, at the end of the day, they even had more uh, as they continue their petition. Whether or not they will, they, whether or not Japan will agree to what these uh, people want, we'll wait to see. All right. 
on the part of the Japanese government, let's flip over and take a look at what they're doing. That's the Japanese Prime Minister uh, Yoshihide Suga today talking about tougher laws for people uh, breaking the rules in Talking about tougher rules for rule breakers at the Olympics. Of course, he highlighted some of the things that will be done so people will come to Tokyo and, of course, ignore all the restrictions. Uh, so people who violate the rules, people who behave badly will face sanctions. That's what the Jap Japanese, that's a message from the Japanese Prime Minister. Let's also quickly tell you that, of course, the local organizing committee uh, of this event, uh, headed by uh, the governor of Tokyo, has confirmed receiving that petition from uh, the guys who say they want the Olympics to be canceled. So they have done that, and uh, uh, it's, it's getting interesting. Okay, so let's move on. Let's also talk about, you see a lot of positives and a lot of, I don't want to use the word negative. Let's also talk about something that was heartwarming today. A test event was held in Japan. Skateboarders, um, of course, were doing some test events. And, of course, missing, uh, conspicuously missing, was the fans. And these skateboarders are saying, look, forget all that is happening. We want the games to go ahead. We want the fans to be here. These things will not be interesting without the fans. So, uh, different strokes for different folks. While some people want it to be cancelled, some others want the games to go ahead. Before I introduce uh, my uh, partners on uh, the show tonight, they're ready. Uh, let's just quickly listen to the World Athletics President, Sebastian Cole, talking about the Olympics, lending his voice to what is going on right now, and he feels the Olympics can still go ahead safely. Let's listen to him. Then, of course, we'll get the thoughts of Austin Okun Akpan and, of course, Alfred Okolibe. I genuinely believe it can be delivered safely and securely. There are no perfect solutions, uh, and there will be big, big challenges. But my, my real view from having been uh, in Tokyo and in Sapporo is that these protocols are very serious. I know from my own experience, you know, it took us nearly three hours to get through the airport uh, when we landed uh, with the COVID tests and the paperwork. And then we were sort of cocooned in a small hotel room waiting for another test before we could take the flight to Sapporo. Uh, and then even when we came back to uh, Tokyo, we were all, you know, World Athletics team were on the same um, floor. Uh, and, you know, we were hermetically sealed from, you know, from people, you know, outside of the hotel. So, look, I, I think in, in micro, I've seen really how seriously they take it. The athletes that I spoke to that were out there, both in the test and the test events on the track and on the roads, recognized it was, you know, it, there were frustrations. But I think they were also comforted by the fact that the, the Japanese organizing committee were taking it as seriously as they did. All right, that's it. Um, I mean, we can go on and on. Things going in different directions. Some want it, some don't. Uh, of course, the government that's, uh, you know, the government of Japan doing all uh, that they could do in spite of the numerous challenges they're facing right about now. All right, let me introduce my partners now, they join me. Uh, let me start with Alfred Okolibe. Alfred, greetings to you. Thanks for joining us on the show tonight. Very good evening to you, Yemi. Excited to be here. Um, delighted to um, be a part of the show uh, this week. Um, last, uh, uh, the story about the uh, Olympics and all of the vibes coming from Japan is one that um, anybody that follows the sport will be concerned about. Uh, the COVID um, situation is that which is developing by the day. Some are talking about the third and fourth wave, and um, they're taking it, they're giving it the attention that it deserves. How this will, um, how the Olympics will go on with this kind of situation, I, I, I'm still thinking whether whether it will happen or not, but the Japanese have shown their result. And 
the, the thing about it is when people came out to sign petition means that they just feel that as citizens they owe it the responsibility to themselves and to uh, their fellow countrymen to speak out and air their concern. Yes, from the commercial point of view, and of course, all of the efforts being put in, in the last four or five years, um, the loss could be colossal. But I mean, these are about people. Um, I don't know how to they, how they manage the situation, but I think um, the vibes is that the Japanese government, they are resolved to doing a World Athletics, uh, resolved to having a championship somehow. Um, even if the Olympics is even if the Olympics is going to hold, it's going to be somewhat of a watered down event because of uh, the, the issues at hand. But I mean, um, that's a major concern. I think um, the institution will be fluid for a very very long time. All right, uh, for someone who before now was very optimistic and sounded like this today, I, I guess is hitting all of us hard. Let me go to Austin Okon Akwan, who has never hidden his thoughts about uh, what is going on in Japan, how he feels uh, is problematic. First, uh, greetings to you, Austin. Thanks for joining us uh, on the show tonight. Uh, I, I want to ask you, I can see the smile on your face, but I, I got to ask you this. Were you expecting, at any point, did you expect that those guys could gather up to 350,000 plus signatures on that petition? What's well, great to hear me, and of course to our viewers. Uh, I mean, it's not funny, but I was just laughing at Alfred because I think about two or three weeks ago, Alfred was so optimistic. Remember that show where you asked me, and Alfred said, if we can do it with the National Sports Festival, we can do it with Tokyo. And I said, guys, look, this is serious. <laughs> what is happening in Japan is that the people, those 350,000 signatures, they are now trying to tell government we are going, if you don't want to protect our lives, because government has the sole responsibility of protecting life and property. So if you don't want to do it, say our petition, we want to protect ourselves. You hear me? At the time the COVID-19 outbreak was announced, ask the editors at the editorial meeting, I will say, I say never. They can never postpone the Olympics. The Olympics is the world biggest event. At that time, COVID-19 was just doing push-ups. It was just telling the world, look, I'm just at the corner. And then when, when it is struck and the Olympics was postponed, just see the effect of it being postponed alone. One billion US dollars, you know, was lost. Now, what these guys are doing with this signature, they are reminding the people, the government of Japan, if you bring in people into this country, put our lives at stake, and then jam up persons, open the doors to have more COVID-19 cases, we're going to hold you responsible. So the vibes around the Olympics is gradually dying. It's so unfortunate. Even if you see the energy level of Sebastian Coe, it has dropped. It's just Thomas Bagler that is still praying. He has gone spiritual over this situation. But it is what it is. And it's so sad that it is happening at this time because Tokyo was ready to give us a fantastic Olympics. But this is what it is now. And I mean, I'm still the guy that says that it's not a do or die affair. We will just only feel bad about it. I need to go down into record that the Olympics didn't hold in Japan when it was supposed to happen. Right. Our lives were safe. Okay. All right. I, I want to quickly go back to Alfred. And it appears like the resolve of the Japanese government has been tested. Well, like you alluded to, and I'm tempted to agree with you, it appears like they have made up their mind that this Olympics will go ahead. And it, it didn't come as a surprise when uh, the Japanese prime minister says, look, for those violators, for those who break the laws during the Olympics, there, there's gonna, he wants to take a tough stance against them. Does all of that indicate that even if the cases increase, that Japan would still want these Olympics to go ahead? All uh, right. Uh, uh, you just said it there. I mean, um, if you look at the way the Japanese government has carried on, um, they've had been issued, resolved that this is going to happen. One, if you, if you talk about the, the cost of putting this together, the amount that they've put into this and the projections they've made before spending this kind of money to host the Olympics, you just know that um, at some point, who will pick the bills? I, I mean, this is a competition that is, it's, it costs so much to put together. 
and of course the projections in terms of incomes that will uh, income that will come during the games. All of that, you, I, I'm sure they will be scratching their head. Hey, why did we go into all of this? But uh, you know that uh, the COVID-19 situation is not something one could have uh, predicted. And so, um, I think for the government, it's just a question of looking for soft landing. But there are other issues, um, mitigating factors, like um, now that the citizens of the country have come out and say, you know what, um, since you don't want to, like Austin said, since you don't want to protect us, it is our responsibility to um, put our objection to people coming in and having this game because of the, the, the effect and the, the perhaps maybe the casualty that it will bring. We want to make our voice be heard. But at the end of the day, the people might have their say, but um, they might not have their way if the government is resolved on having it. Like I said, even if this competition is going to hold, I mean the Olympics, it's going to be a much watered down Olympics. Take, for example, the National Sports, uh, Sports Festival. At some point, it was um, resolved that the number of athletes to attend was almost cut by half. I mean, those could be measures that um, the Olympics, at the end of the day, we want to look at to say, okay, you know what? For games like this, uh, if we're looking at top 10, top, uh, top 10, top 20 to attend or top 12, why not bring down the um, the qualifying standard? Okay, why not raise it a bit so that more people, we don't have more people coming? Because it will cost more to protect the citizens. It, I mean, these are extra costs that the Olympics already is, is running on red, and now to add extra costs and all of this, and if you don't get the buy-in of the citizens, I, it, tough luck, it will be, it will be right. like uh, pushing it too far. Okay, uh, let me go to Austin before we go on a break uh, quickly so that we can uh, leave this uh, little matter of uh, the Olympics. Do you see anything breaking the resolve of the Japanese government? Um, I mean, I've had to agree uh, with Alfred that he appears like, come what may, these guys want this competition to go ahead. But do you see anything that will break their resolve? And that thing wouldn't be increased number of COVID-19 cases because the numbers are increasing, but it appears like they just want this thing to go ahead. Because it seems like that's the only way out for them. You know, as Alfred mentioned, even though now it, it looks like it's going to be a very quiet Olympics, they just want to get it done. Remember, Yemi, uh, the Olympics has a major, major objective of promoting a particular city and the government of Japan. They are looking at this Olympics to promote Tokyo. But is Tokyo being promoted now for the right reasons? Persons objecting to it, even top government officials. I told you that my friend from the ruling party that said, let's not fool ourselves. Even inside the government force, they are, they are still divided, you know? So I, I know their resolve is being tested. They just want to have it. But it's a global event. First thing first. You've already said there are not be fans. That's a problem on this one for, for the Olympics. And then the media. How many persons? For instance, I mean, if we tell you now, come go to Tokyo to cover the Olympics. You think about your family and ask some questions whether we love you enough to send you to Japan, you know? So these are the things, it's, it's, it's a dark cloud around the Olympics. And even if the government really wants to have it, they need to sit down and do a proper risk evaluation so they don't regret their actions. All right, so uh, I, I guess we can, leave, we can leave it there for now. And um, uh, fingers crossed we'll see what the government of Japan decides to do if the cases increase. Uh, but it appears like all the countries are preparing to be in Tokyo. Uh, apart from North Korea, no, no country has said we are not going. So uh, uh, maybe until that point, we'll see what will happen. We need to go on a break um, right about now. When we return from that break, we'll talk about the uh, Tatuan Man list released by Coach Gernot Raw for the upcoming friendly against Cameroon. We'll also talk about Aimba. By now, they should have landed uh, in Egypt. So they be, will be facing uh, pyramids on Sunday. We'll also talk about the MPFL, the NNL, and a whole lot more. All for you on Sports Tonight. All right, welcome back. Uh, so we're done with the Olympics. Let's move on on the show. Let's really talk about the uh, Taiwan Man list uh, released by Coach Gernot Raw for the upcoming friendly against the indomitable Lions of Cameroon. But, of course, um, eight players will, will be dropped. Uh, the list will be pruned to 
23. But let's just show you the players invited, uh, the provisional squad. Uh, just eight, eight out of this uh, 31 players will be dropped. But let's have the goalkeepers, Francis Uzor, John Noble. We all know John Noble from uh, the uh, Abai Elephants, uh, Maduka Okoye and uh, Ike Chiku at Zenwa. These are the four goalkeepers uh, on the list. Let's go to the defenders. You have Kenneth Omero, Kevin Apoguna, Chido Zier, uh, William Trost Ekong, uh, Ola Lua Aino, and of course Jamilu Collins, all on that uh, list. You have Zedu Zanuzi, uh, Tyro Neboe, Olua Shemlogo, Ajayi as uh, part of the defenders. For the midfielders, I have a few players in there. Ogene Kara Etebo, Wilfred Ndidi, Abdullahi uh, Shehu. Uh, a lot of people feel he's a defender, but he's listed as a midfielder. Uh, the guys will have their comments about that. Joseph Ayodelia Rebo and um, Abraham Marcos, the new boy. Of course, I'll, I'll get the guys to uh, give me their thoughts on that as well. Uh, well, this is loaded. Captain Ahmed Musa, uh, of course, is in there. Alex Iwobi, you have Sadiq Kumar, Samuel Chigueze, Victor Sime, Kelechi Yanacho. These are the forwards uh, invited. Moses Simon, Henry Oyekuru, Anayo Iwala, of course, Peter Olayinka, and um, Terran Murphy, Paul Onoachu, and Simi Wanko. Uh, if Coach Kenneth Rod didn't invite this guy, I'm very sure a lot of people would have taken placards uh, on the streets. And maybe, maybe that's just why he got included uh, on that. Uh, I, I want to start with Austin. Uh, I, I want to get your thoughts. I mean, lists, I mean, nobody can argue with lists because, you know, you, when you're a workman, you decide the tools you want to work with. The only thing uh, we can talk about is when the results are not going the way we expect. But on your own part, is there any super egos player currently doing well that you feel merits a place on that provisional squad that is not there? Uh, not any that comes to mind right now because that's um, arguably all we've got. I'm even super excited that Kenneth Omeru is back in the mix, uh, which is a very good one. Um, you know, the problem with lists, I mean, no matter who you invite, some persons will still ask sure. questions and we're all guilty about that, you know, and as you said, it is the person that handles the tools that knows, you know, uh, which one to use. Uh, but if it now doesn't go well, we'll say, why did you use hammer? Where I supposed to use chisel? Mm -hmm. You know, so that's exactly. why we're called fans. <laughs> so, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a good list, particularly when, when you're playing a rich, friendly uh, as uh, with an opponent in Cameroon, doesn't come any bigger in African football. So you you want to have the best. And then um, I'm, I was just trying to you know have a good look at the midfielders because I think that's where um, we need to see a whole lot of creativity and some level of you know a change in Nigeria in the Super Ego. So I'm I'm thinking if you bring in Abraham Marcos, like a lot of persons don't know, he plays in Ferenze in Portugal, mm -hmm. let's see something about him. You know, let's just know why he's invited he to invited. the team, you know. I know eight, eight persons will be dropped. It's sad. Uh, but don't touch John, John Noble and, and Ikechi <laughs> Koezenwa because those are the ones representing uh, league football. Just leave them alone. But but it's a good list um, in all, particularly the midfield. Just, just saying... Paulo Noachu and Simi Wankoi alone, you know, makes it makes it very good. Tells you that current form is prevailing uh, with Daniel Ross. So let's just see what he can do with, with this team. All right. Um, all right, let's flip. Uh, Alfred, I, I want to get your thoughts. I do agree with Austin. If, 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 a, if a player is um, a fresh invite, and there must be something you have seen that has made you invite the player. So if, if you invite such a player, give him minutes. Let's see him. And... You know, so maybe we could make up our mind. Of course, it's down to the coach to decide whoever gets to play. But of course, it's always been my thought that if you invite players, give them the time to play. Exactly my worry. Uh, yeah, we, uh, with Ganaro, and uh, sometimes he gives them um, um, the kind of invitations that, that he sends out. Terry uh, Murphy, for example, plays his football in, in uh, Portugal. Um, no, uh, Terra Murphy plays in, in, in France, and France, of course, yeah. uh, Marcos Abraham. Yeah, Marcos Abraham plays his football in Portugal. You ask yourself, um, the only reason why they are invited because they are Nigerian descent or they are Nigerian players who play abroad. 
they, we are so quick to give opportunities to guys to play outside the church in this country. And you ask yourself, this is a friendly game uh, against Cameroon. And um, the best that we can get from the home front is a certain outfit player, Anna Yoiwala, isn't it? And of course, uh, two goalkeepers, of, of the two goalkeepers, maybe one will be excused from the team. And I mean, the likelihood that um, Maduko Okoye will not be asked. Um, Uzoho will not be asked. So between Ezemwa and John Nobu, one of them will be out of the team. And with that attacking lineup that you line out there, I mean, the only rep that we have from the current set of players, the question is, do we, okay, now Ahmed Musa, the captain of the team, yeah. um, plays for uh, Killers. plays for Kano Pillars. And, and the argument has always been uh, in time past. Um, in time past, um, it is form, how they played for the club and rest of them. Ahmed Musa will get his first cap for Kano Pillars, uh, hopefully, against Adama United on Sunday. So technically, he has not played any competitive um, match. Uh, for Anna Yoiwala, you can excuse him because he was, he's been playing for Eyimba. In fact, his performance against um, Orlando Pirates in the last game, I mean, he more than deserves to be in that team. The question is, what is the standard that you bring, um, pack all of these are players, come back home? Many of them, are they match winners? Are there people in situations you have, it's okay, when push turns to shove, uh, speaking from time, these are the people that can deliver for you or they're just squad players. These guys have been here for a whole lot. I mean, beyond all of these guys that have been invited, it then means that Ganaro does not have a team B or a team that you can say, okay, these are the next generation of guys that he's looking at. And it's in the games like this against Cameroon that those next generation, you are supposed to look at them. But we don't have any of that. Perhaps maybe you say, okay, only Anoyo, Iwala, and John Nobu, and maybe Ezenwa. Those are the team, if you like, team B players that you can say, okay, these are the guys that, these are the prospects that we are looking at in the next two, three years. When these guys of all these other guys that have been invited will go. I have a problem with that. And uh, for the life of me, it's who we've got, it's who we've got uh, get a raw, and I don't think he has changed. So um, let, let's stick with him. All right. Okay. So uh, we, we leave it at that uh, for now. Uh, before we leave international football, let's just quickly uh, talk about this one. Hector Cooper has been named manager of uh, DR Congo. He had a stint uh, with Egypt, I think. Yeah, he had a stint with, with Egypt. Um, and he appears, Hugo Bruce, recently employed by Safa. Uh, it, it does appear some of these countries uh, are beginning to take a serious approach to national team football, especially because most of the best players in Africa do not even play on the continent. Alfred, uh, I mean, I know you're still with me, and uh, I want to get okay, your thoughts okay. and, uh, on that as, as well, as, as we I move mean, on quickly. I mean, Hector Cooper made his um, name um, as a coach of um, Valencia. Uh, yep. Yeah. Um, played up to the finals of the Champions League. Lately, he came back, and we saw what he did with um, Egypt. Fantastic team that he made there. Perhaps he wants to join the league of um, the Claude Leroy's of this world and the players. Um, the Kaspar Sack and others who move from one African country mm -hmm. to the other, you know, looking for where to. Um, I mean, if it's African football, if Africans want to take themselves serious. Um, I, I don't think, I don't think, um, um, you know, bringing these um, expatriate coaches, I don't think it's the best thing. They can, they have locals, they have uh, players of uh, Congolese descent who can do a decent job, who know this thing, who know the terrain. Uh, I mean, if Ke Stephen Keshi. Uh, God bless his soul. If he was not given the opportunity with the national team, who couldn't have been saying a local, a local um, a Nigerian based coach or a Nigerian born yeah. coach won the Africa Cup of Nations? That's true. So if you don't, if you don't buy a lottery, you don't win it. I mean, bringing all these guys, jolly men, to come here do this job, what value have they added at the end of the day? The next competition you lose out, they look for the next new ticket elsewhere. <laughs> okay. Um, well, <laughs> all right. <it's>, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's African football for you. Okay, that's African football. All right, uh, let me get all in thoughts. Uh, you know, I think it's only, it's only fair that I get his thoughts as well. Hector Cooper, um, he appears, I mean, African countries now, most of their best players not playing their trade on the continent, so they're looking at this coach. But our friend quite rightly pointed out that some of these coaches 
a year or two, you're out of a major competition, they're ready to, to jump uh, ship. Most of them don't think long term. But then again, um, Alfred, you can't blame them. You know, I mean, they are professionals and, and I mean, they meet the, the qualification. And, and sometimes, you know, our African football leaders, they believe that uh, it comes with some clout when you get a foreign manager. That we need to change. I totally agree with Alfred, you know. Uh, so with Hector Cooper, look, it's a win-win for DR Congo. I think their football has been on the rise, you know, uh, for some time now. So he comes with a lot of experience. You also know the African football, Alfred mentioned, he joins the likes of Claude Leroy. Uh, let's also put the likes of um, Heaven Nard, uh, Paul Poots, that could Burkina Faso. Um, Hugo Bruce is now with South Africa. So, so it's all, it's all about, uh, you know, people wanting to take their football to the next level. But while we do this, it's important that these guys are given the task of developing football locally, work with the local coaches, you know, bring in their expertise, you know, just so when they decide to go look for their next meal ticket, uh, that's that coach that is at home would have learned one or two things from, you know, from their experience. So right. uh, I, I think it's a good one for, for DR Congo. Uh, we've got Ghana through, so we ain't shaking. <laughs> <laughs> you have to bring that up. <laughs> okay. All right, let's move on now and, and talk about something that brings smiles to our faces, football on the domestic scene. Match Day 21 takes center stage. Uh, of course, one of the matches will not be played because Aimba is uh, involved in the CAF Competition Cup. But let's quickly take a look at the fixtures and allow you guys to tell me what you think. So, Match Day 21, I'll run through the fixtures. I'll go to Alfred. He's going to get, have the first bite of the apple. Then, of course, I'll come to Austin as well. Canopilus will be up against the Damar United. Heartland will take on Casina uh, United. Wiki Torres will play against Nasro United. Quara United will be up against the two United. All of these matches, match day 21. Abia Warriors uh, were supposed to take on a by International. That game will not be played. Of course, you know the reason why. We'll talk about that later. Rangers International and Rivers United easily, easily pick off the pack. And um, I have a feeling the guys too will agree with me. The Kara FC will take on Aqua United. Sunshine Stars, um, hopefully they'll put all their troubles behind them. Sunshine Stars will take on Jigawa Golden Stars. You also have uh, in all of this Lobby Stars, Taking on FC Fanyoba, then Warrior Wolves will lock horns with MFM. That's Mountain uh, of Fire and Miracles Ministry. Alfred, your thoughts. Without putting words into your mouth, I have a feeling you're going to talk about Rangers and Rivers. Uh, but I'll be happy if you prove me wrong. No, no, for me, I, I think my interest will lie in um, what becomes of um, Dakada versus um, Aqua United. Um, Dakada have um, for two seasons now been punching above their weight. Aqua seem to be a more settled team now. Uh, more settled team now. Ken Boboye seem to have found his group there. Um, it's the Uyo Derby, and I want to see how that game pans out. Um, if if Aqua gets a win in this game, it's an away fixture for them. If they get a win in this game, they will kind of have a vice-like grip at the top of at top of the league. And this is about the best time for you to be top of uh, the um, of top of the MPFL. One other game that I want to talk about, I, I think for, for all of the wrong reason is uh, Katina United going to uh, against Heartland of Oweri. Uh, of course, um, you and I are witnesses to the back and forth of Samuel Unnotri, a player that developed with Heartland, been with them by far their, you know, their best player in the first part of the season. Somehow in some controversial circumstances ended up in Katina United. What did he do? Their first game, um, the first game of the second round, he got a goal in the um, is it four five one routing of uh, of um, uh, Wiki Tories and Heartland is shouting blue mother. Will the question is will someone not be part of the Katina United team to face Heartland in uh, you know the Heartland people are saying no, he was not properly cleared. And they say they are ready to right. fight this to the So those are two games I'm looking at. MFM got um, what looked like um, three three points and three goals against FC Fan Yuma. Now against a struggling team like Warrior Wolves. Hey, if they get something on uh, from that game, I mean it counts for so long. And finally, um, I'm looking forward to see Ahmed Musa. I understand that game will be on um, 
on um, the N, on the NPFL um, uh, TV, and I'm looking forward to see that game. It will be Ahmed Musa's first game if he gets to play for Canopilas when Canopilas will start a more United. Let's see how the Super Eagles um, captain will fare in uh, the Nigerian Premier League. Okay, uh, of course, he's no stranger to the Nigerian Professional Football League. I wish him well as he begins his second stint with uh, Kano Pilas. Austin, um, let me have your take. Uh, I'm not going to put words into your mouth, but, but le let me allow you to surprise me. <laughs> I don't know why you guys do this to me. And I'm also happy that it's almost time to go on a break, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I might not get to this thing so much. But yeah, the the Wheel Derby should get us talking. The Wheel Derby should get us talking. Aqua United, they're unbeaten in 10 matches. Um, Coach Kennedy Boboye and that team, they're having a good run. And you can tell the way they play. Match after match, their confidence, you know, improves. Um, the first um, derby with um, Dakada, I think I did go less. That was match day one. Uh, who wants it more now? We will, we, you know, we'll determine uh, the way that game will go. But for me, I really want to see Quara United and play two United. I say this because Quara United, they're still unbeaten at home. They are third on the log. They're still my surprise package of the season. And um, we play two United and their last win. They might just be having some fire that they want to keep burning. Sunshine Stars, they've gone 13 matches. You hear me? 13 matches without a win. If they don't win against Jigawa Golden Stars, man, I don't know what Coach Benga Ogumbote will do with that team again. They need a win so badly. And this presents a good opportunity uh, for them to get something out of it. And of course, I'm looking forward to seeing Akbar Musa play in that one between Kano Pillars and um, Adamawa United. All right. So, before we go on a break, let's just quickly show you the CAF Confederation Cup quarterfinal fixtures. Uh, you, you might be wondering why uh, we listed the Imba, and of course, we're saying that a game is postponed. It's because they were involved in the CAF Confederation Cup quarterfinal. They'll be playing the first leg. Uh, right about now, they should have landed uh, in Egypt. They traveled this evening. They should have landed uh, as they prepare to face pyramids. But four matches will be played on Sunday. Let's take a look at those. Uh, matches, of course, our hearts and mind with uh, uh, our representative talking about AIM, but I'm very sure it's going to come up on your screen. There you have it, uh, uh, Nigeria's representative, Ayimba, up against Pyramids. Other fixtures, Orlando Pirates will be up against uh, Raja Casablanca of Morocco. Cotton Sport Garua of Cameroon will be up against ASC Giraffe of Senegal. CS Vaxien will be up against GSKB of Algeria. Pyramids will take on Aimba. We need to go on a break right about now. When we return from the break, I'll get the guys to give me their thoughts on that game and, of course, uh, talk about the FA Cup. Uh, I'm very sure that will be all time we'll permit us to do uh, when we return from the break. Uh, welcome back. And so uh, let's uh, dive straight uh, into it. Um, Austin, uh, le le let me get your take. Um, Aimba Pyramids, what are you expecting? Well, if you look at um, the group stage, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't expect so much from Aimba. But hey, this is football where anything can happen. I've been taking a look at um, I'm doing some research about pyramids. Of course, they're a team you must respect. You know, any club from, from Egypt, you, you know that they've got some things going for them. Uh, pyramids in the group stage, they will finish second on the group D table. They won four, lost two, they scored seven, considered five, and ended the group campaign with 12 points. Let's go to Aimba. Aimba won three, lost three. If I lost all the away matches, considered eight as a minus, two goals difference. Scored six and ended with nine points. If you want to go through that, then you say, no, it's going to be difficult for Aimba. Since they didn't win any of their away matches in the group stage. But they now understand. I was speaking to Alfred and when we get on the break, our football works with temperature, look and feel. So if you put your hand on the body of the Aimba players now, uh, it will be hot because now they understand that it's not just the quarterfinals. You win, you go to the semis. This is the money spinning stage. And this is a, an opportunity to, you know, tell yourself that you need to make um, some good statements in African football. Pyramids, no doubt, no pushover. Uh, and if you look at the way they played, 
I mean, they only lost to Raja Casablanca, which is expected. Raja Casablanca, uh, they were the leaders of the group and a better team. But they picked points away at Mungo and then Kana. They picked good points, beat them home and away. That's how to make a All statement right. as a team that has intent and know where you're going to. So if you look at their results, you would want Aimba to fret. But no, this is the time for Coach Fata Oshaw to reshuffle, to reflect, ask his All players right. questions, put their destiny in their hands, avoid those silly mistakes you did in the group stage, take your chances this time. Okay. You almost sent all of us to us to try attention. This time around, let us smile and say, well all done. Right. Give you guys a clap, tap you on your back and say, right. you've done well for yourself and Nigeria. All right. Hopefully that will be the case. Alfred, a uh, quick one uh, on what you expect on Sunday. Well, uh, if you look at, like Austin said, like, if you look at the stats, um, Ajibai are not good travelers. That's why right, this, um, uh, this um, term. Uh, but for me, I think that pyramid team was beaten by Rangers in Egypt. Um, goals scored by um, uh, the, the, the late striker, Ajibai's um, uh, late striker. Um, I think, but, uh, sorry, Rangers play striker. Um, I recall, too, that um, in that fixture, Pyramid won in Enugu. What I'm saying is, if Fatah Osha is what's going for this game, it's, I hope they did their background work very well, compared to perhaps maybe a call through to Enugu. Hey, these guys can pick one or two things and um, look at the best way to go about this. The good thing about playing the first leg in way is that it gives you an opportunity to come back and regroup. I hope it, even if they lose, let it be a slim margin and mm -hmm. it will make the work a bit easier for them. And thank God on us in them, um, for the captain is back. He, he sat out the last game against the last okay. Pirates. And that, that would be a big boost for, that would be a, 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 a big boost for them. All right. A goal on the road will help them a lot in the second okay. leg. All right. So um, that's it for the CAF uh, Confederation Cup. Hopefully when we return on the show next week, we'll be talking about a win for um, Aimba. All right, our parting shot on the show tonight will be about the uh, English FA Cup. We're done with the um, CAF Confederation Cup. Um, let's just quickly listen to Thomas Tuchel and um, let's hear what he has to say ahead of the game. Then I'll listen to quick words from Austin and Alfred as we prepare to wrap things up on the show. These are two finals, and we don't think about anything else than the two finals. It's a final for Cup, and it's a final for top four for us. It's uh, clear. We missed a chance uh, against uh, Arsenal to be decisive, uh, to have a decisive advantage. So now we have to cope with it, and uh, first of all, show the reaction in, in Wembley to have the upper hand on, on, on Tuesday again. This is... This is what we're up for. Yeah, it's, it's unbelievable. I, ju I just forgot it until you asked uh, that there are spectators tomorrow. I got so used to not having spectators. Semi-final was without spectators for us, not for, for Southampton and Leicester. So, yeah, uh, will be a shock. <laughs> will be a shock tomorrow to go on the pitch and hear some noise. But it will be so, so nice. We are absolutely looking forward to that. The, the game is not the same without spectators and it's... Uh, it's pure pleasure to, to arrive tomorrow and see, see our fans there, see parts of our families. I think it's a huge boost for everybody. All right, huge boost for everybody. Guys, we have a few seconds to wrap things up. Let me go to Austin quickly uh, before I sign you off. I know we, lo we love Leicester because of Kelechi, Yanacho, and Wilfred Ndidi. We also love Chelsea. A lot of Nigerians have played for the club. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to be a good game of football. I'm also excited that the fans are, uh, will be allowed into Wembley. I said it this morning. Yeah, I, mean, I was struggling to give an, to give analysis about this match. This man, Cecilia said, where, where are you? And as I, as I was trying to think, I said, let me save myself. I just said, Leicester, because of Kelechi and Acha. All right, all right. You know? uh, that's a safe place to, to land it. Uh, Alfred, your take as we're ready to go. Well, uh, for me, I think it's um, it promises to be an interesting game. Um, Leicester, like you said, senior man kills. Um, his career has taken an um, upward swing. Uh, it would be nice to see him um, get a major trophy in England. Uh, of course, uh, for uh, with Freddie, it would also be nice. I know Chelsea fans will just sort of um, okay. 
kick it, but I this is Nigeria we're talking about here. Yeah. My sentiments <laughs> okay. was less than this week. All right. That's a good place to leave it. Guys, I want to thank you uh, for your time on the show tonight. Uh, Alfred Okoligbe, Austin Okon Akman, thank you for taking our time to be with me on the show. Hopefully we'll get to do this again some other time. All right. So uh, that's uh, our, our friends, Alfred Okoligbe and Austin uh, Okon Akman, uh, giving us their thoughts on the show. That's a wrap on the show. Today is the last one for the week. Uh, we'll do this again next week to then. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe. Uh, we'll see you next week. I'm Gabriel Bye-bye now.